Among the visitors bust into the Harbin Wildlife Park, there is a sense of excitement and anticipation. They're all here for just one reason. In the center of the park, the tourist buses form a circle. An ambush of Siberian tigers is waiting, and the appearance of the blue truck means it's feeding time. Here, this is considered good family entertainment. But look away now if you're squeamish, because this isn't pleasant. Slipping down the hydraulic ram, a domestic cow. The tigers kill not because they're hungry. In fact, they're actually overweight. This is a stage managed performance laid on for the amusement of the crowd. The park exists for one reason to allow the tourists to watch live animals die a gruesome and terrifying death. It's described as a family outing where even young children join in the spectacle, looking on as a duck is slowly eaten alive. For two pounds, this man has bought a chicken, teasing the tiger with a terrified fowl, before forcing the bird into what amounts to a chicken vending machine. And the crowd always backs the tiger. In the wild, tigers are solitary hunters that finish off their prey swiftly. Here, the overfed beasts attack in a pack, and the kill is long and drawn out. It's been 10 minutes since the cow was brought down and is still alive. From the passing buses, the visitors can see and hear the animals suffering. China's callous treatment of its animals is nationwide. This is the zoo in Jinan, 600 miles to the south. For the young bear pulling the car, it is a brutal and exhausting performance that's repeated twice a day for the pleasure of the holiday crowd. China may well have one of the world's fastest growing economies. Next year it hosts the Olympics, but as far as animal rights activists are concerned, conditions in its zoos and wildlife parks are a national disgrace. Traveling across China cataloging these abuses, Jenny Fong and Dr. John Wedderburn have seen it all. These animal rights campaigners have been carrying out spot checks at China zoos for the last 10 years. Today they're at Changsha in southern China. This is not so much a zoo, more an insane asylum for animals. And this is what John calls zookosis. They've got nothing to do. So their minds have gone and they, they put their feet in exactly the same place each time if you watch closely. And um, it's just a repetitive movement to get their minds away from the unutterable boredom. This animal should be on antipsychotic drugs. And the suffering of these animals can still bring Jenny to tears. You see people coming in and out and they don't see anything wrong with that. We build this environment, we drive them crazy. That's very distressed. To the audience, the performing animals are just part of the show, but John and Jenny know exactly what they've had to suffer to perfect their act. They are more terrified of the beating they'll get than they are of the fire, so that's why they do it. But look how happy the audience is. They're wreathed in smiles and loving every minute of it, thinking how clever these trainers are getting these animals to do these wonderful things. Back in Harbin, it's the afternoon show, and another cow goes down the ramp. You can buy a cow to feed the tigers for 100 pounds, and for China's new middle class, money's no problem. We phoned the wildlife center to ask why live domestic animals were suffering this way. The management refused to take our call. And while the crowds continue to flock to wildlife parks like these, China's bloody animal slaughter will continue. Peter Sharp, Sky News, Harbin in northern China.